Well, one year ago today, none of us could have predicted the wild ride that has been 2020. From the devastation of the coronavirus pandemic to a global movement against racial injustice and so much more. Russ Mitchell walks us through a look at the stories, the challenges and the hope that made 2020 a year like no other. 2020, the start of a new decade and the promise of a brighter tomorrow. January 1st, 2020. But in a year that altered the course of history, days of tragedy, triumph and tenacity we never saw coming. January began with the impeachment trial of President Trump and quickly turned to reports of a mysterious illness. We don't know what's gonna happen, but we do know washing your hands will help prevent the spread of germs. And the stunning loss of a sports icon. This will only devastate uh, all the basketball community and all the people who love sports because Kobe Bryant truly was one of the great sportsmen of our generation. But soon, the world watched and changed as a public health crisis began to loom large, even as we heard a very different message. America's enemies are on the run. America's fortunes are on the rise. And America's future is blazing bright. By March, the coronavirus pandemic reached us here in Northeast Ohio. We begin tonight with breaking news. Three cases of coronavirus have been confirmed here in Cuyahoga County. And life as we knew it quickly began to change. We begin with a bombshell from the world of sports. The NBA has announced it is suspending its season. The NBA was mulling this situation over even before what happened tonight. We all adjusted to life at home. Dr. Acton just signed a stay at home order for all Ohioans. Daily press conferences new household names. Don your mask, don your cape. Coupled with worry of an uncertain future. The Ohio Department of Job and Family Services reported nearly 188,000 jobless claims last week. We quickly learned to adapt and pivot with virtual windows into our world. Welcome to What's New. I'm Betsy Kling and my co-host Jay Crawford is joining us from home once again. But also a new understanding of a very dire situation. The governor does still strongly suggest that all of us wear a mask if we can. In May, a major awakening around racism in this country, a turning point for change. I'm not okay with it, and no, nobody should be okay with it. So right now, again, we are a ways back, but you can see all of the smoke. You hear the flashbangs behind me right now. There is still so much happening. Spraying stuff and throwing stuff at Spraying us. Spraying pepper spray, yep. shooting tear gas on the floor. I've never seen anything quite like this, watching businesses getting vandalized and broken into and looted. And it is just a really, really tough thing to see. As the weeks went by. Today, Dr. Amy Acton says her time as ODH director is over. The world began to reopen, even as cases here in Ohio continue to spike. 77,000. That's the number of newly diagnosed cases reported around the United States on Friday. And if you're wondering, yeah, that's a one-day record. And as summer gave way to fall, a very different start to the school year. What do we want? School! What do we want? Ah! While Cleveland stepped into the spotlight for the first presidential debate. President Donald Trump and Democratic nominee Joe Biden faced off inside the Samson Pavilion tonight here in Cleveland. Thanks for joining us on this historic and quite chaotic debate night. I'm Sarah Schiffman. And I'm Russ Mitchell. That was insane. Sure. You graduated last in I, your class, I, not first in your I, class. <laughs> I want to make Mr. sure. Mr. President, can you let him finish, sir? No, he doesn't know how to do that. And the fallout that followed. We knew this debate would be historic, but I think it left a lot of heads spinning. You called the president last night a clown several times. Uh, you told him to shut yeah. up. Would you who shut is up, your, man? Listen, who is your... In hindsight, you regret using that language at all? The thing I regret is I regret the way in which the president refused to respond at all to the needs of the American people and say what he's going to do. By early October, President Trump joining the more than 7 million Americans who had tested positive for COVID-19 as the case numbers continued to climb. We are breaking records and not in the way we want. Right now, on the map of Ohio that tracks COVID-19 exposure, 65% of the state is in red. That means a high risk of spread. 
in November, an election day unlike we've ever seen. Long line here. Yes. How long have you been waiting? About an hour and 40 minutes. Calls for challenge, calls for peace, calls for democracy, with a new president and vice president elect finally named. Call him 46, five days after election day, it is done. Former Vice President Joe Biden is now president-elect of the United States. A memorable end to an historic year and an historic start for new hope and healing. All this year, can you believe it? In 2020, we certainly all have learned resilience. Let's carry that and some of these other silver lining lessons into the new year, shall we?